Thank you, Dr. Peter Tawil. It's always a pleasure. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen who are connected to Dentlinks. It's a very interesting uh, website where you can have uh, many lectures, as you have seen before, and more lectures to come. Today, today's topic would be uh, the aesthetic journey, the composite and ceramic. So it would be from composite to ceramic. Um, we all know that the importance of the lips that play a major uh, um, uh, role in hiding and displaying the smile. And whatever is the uh, way they display, we have to re uh, uh, meet the aesthetic uh, demand of the patient. So when we have a face, what do people notice first when they need someone? Actually, this was a survey that was uh, done in, uh, by New York Times. And many people may, uh, have, may, might have uh, mentioned the hair, the smell, the, uh, the eyes, but most of the people, almost half of the population that has been asked, once mentioned the smile. The smile plays a major role. Look at this very nice, beautiful couple. The first thing you, uh, you, you notice, maybe the ladies would notice the earrings or the, 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 the eyeglasses, but definitely the smile of this beautiful lady. Look at these two uh, pictures where you have two smiles, which one will attract more? And actually, this is practically the same person. But so again, and uh, what do people uh, see cosmetic dentistry? Most of these people see cosmetic dentistry to improve the physical attractiveness. 90% of these people think that uh, improving the self attractiveness will have a very uh, positive impact on the self-esteem. From there, we, ha we know that the, the lips play a, uh, the role of the curtains, like in the theater, they open and you have to see, we see the main actors. The actors are divided in two. The main actors are the upper teeth, the supporting actors are the lower teeth. And this would be simulated to a theater where the curtain opens on a stage which is the gingiva and on that stage we are supposed to see the main actors which are the uh, uh, upper teeth which are the main actors not the supporting actors the lower teeth so in the aesthetic treatment we have a lot of uh, uh, means so we can divide the means into different uh, categories in alignment shape correction or color color correction but today's focus would be on um, uh, veneers and aesthetics. Veneers, whether they are composites or uh, ceramic. The evolution of dentistry, we started uh, 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 receiving patients at the early uh, age but for function, asking for function, for chewing. We, we were in the repair business. Then we started doing the prevention and the teeth started to be white because no more amalgam in the teeth. And it was the aesthetic era. And from there, aesthetic started to be aesthetic dentistry. And all that was because of the bonding. The bonding played a major role in transforming dentistry from filling to bonding. And how did it start? It started in the early age, in the mid 50s with Bunocore, when he etched the enamel. And then the bonding came, and later on, in the late 70s, we had Fusiyama. Fusiyama uh, thought about etching the dentine, and he had the means to see that the dentine, when it was etched, we had the open tubules, and we will be able to bond and uh, push the bonding inside and have more retention on the surface. Later on, we had the wet bonding that penetrated and we had more retention, more penetration, and more understanding of the uh, bonding. And from the bonding, we were able to do some repairs, as you can see on the right, uh, uh, on the edge of, uh, on the right edge of the left central incisor, where we were able to just etch it, bond it, and build it up. It's on enamel, and. If we look very closely, we'd like to see these things in pictures 
and I'd like to take pictures because light reflection might uh, correct us and might guide us how to correct the anatomy of the tools. And you can see when you take pictures, you will be able to modify slightly the anatomy to, uh, be, uh, to make it more adapted and more compatible to the uh, natural tools. And you can see uh, the before and after the composite buildup. Uh, this is again the case. Okay. We can go into more complex fractures. And we are relying here on enamel. Bonding is, not, uh, is mainly on enamel because there is not much denting surface that is involved in these type of fractures. The buildup of the composite is divided in, uh, or finalizing the composite is divided in two steps where you have the shaping of the surface, which is the anatomy, and then you have the polishing. Polishing, you glaze what you have shaped. And you're gonna see, for example, this is a young patient, where we had to build it up. We build it up, we shape it. But can you see on the right central incisors, the horizontal lines? These horizontal lines are called perichematas. We need to reproduce these perichematas. The left central was not yet polished, but this has been the structure before the, uh, the uh, final glaze. And here you have the anatomical uh, part that is in the palatal side also that has to reflect the same anatomy of the adjacent tooth. And here at the close up, you can see that the characterizations that have been placed before the final glaze, and then, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the final glaze was done on this tooth. This is not the type of composite that we would like to see in the patient's mouth. Look, composite was done, but is it a proper uh, composite built up? It's not just you stick a simple composite on the surface of the tooth. Look at it, aging, no anatomy, no nothing. It does not reproduce anything. Just building it up again and uh, replacing the old composite in the long axis of the teeth, in the anatomy of the teeth, because at the young age, like this patient, where we had mixed dentition, we are not allowed to correct angulations. We need to put it in the long axis of the tooth so the orthodontist will be able to correct it. This is a patient before he had the fracture, after he was reconstructed, and he was supposed to undergo orthodontic treatment. But his mother, when she saw what we did, refused to give him this orthodontic uh, treatment. Later on, he broke the, the left center and he, it was redone by uh, another dentist. When he came for checkup again, like six, uh, 16 or 17 years later, this is what you can see. The right center is still with the composite that we did at the very young age. And the left central was done with the composite that uh, was replaced by another dentist. Very important here to mention that isolating the teeth and properly reconstructing the teeth with uh, etching, rinsing, and building up, not self-etch on these cases, because self-etch on these cases do not give us enough retention on the enamel, would uh, prevent this kind of leakage that is happening on the left central, as you can see. The left central has been replaced by another composite. The right central has only been polished and nothing was done other than that. Composite can help us a lot in enhancing the smile of the patients. Look at this patient who complains from her smile. Um, and after orthodontic treatment, it was not properly uh, address and we were able to give her this time with slight extensions on the two central incisors and some build up on the two central incisors to uh, give her a nicer um, uh, smile. The upper teeth has to follow the line of the lower lip. And you can see how it was in a negative uh, uh, curve is now in a positive curve on the left slide. Again and again, self-edge does not help on this type of restorations. We need to do edge and, edge and rinse, then prime and bond 
and place the proper bonding and composite in these situations. This, these pieces of the tools that were reconstructed were re, uh, taken out and then they were puzzled in and placed in. As you can see, everything went into order. And this is this, uh, the picture before on your left, and this is the picture on your right after the treatment. But the problem of the composite, no matter how neat you are in doing it, there's the problem of the aging. As we know, composite acts like a sponge, and especially on the margins. As you can see, margins uh, do get discolored. We can manage polishing this with sometimes and remove these lines, but the composite will become dull with time. And this dull and the color of this composite become um, uh, tends towards the brownish, grayish colors because of the uh, uh, colors that, is, uh, that are absorbed from the mass of these patients. Uh, uh, we can just polish it. We can just polish it. And, uh, but the margins, we cannot always reach them to the end. If the patient is happy with what he has, it is okay with him. As you can see, the upper slide before polishing, after polishing on the lower slide. But notice the right lateral is not as bright as it was done at like 10 years before on this case. Another situation, again, on the number 11 and number 12, which are the right central and lateral incisors, we had to do a bleaching, build up some composite on the surface and restore that. Composites are very helpful on these matters. We have a lot of shades. We can play with the shades, but some composites are more translucent and less translucent than others. You have to use the composite that is best in your situation. This patient was satisfied with what she had and she uh, uh, did not want to go through crowns on the central incisor. And this is the situation after the aging, and you can see that we can place, uh, play with that. Again, composites on the edges. You can see these uh, uh, mesial edges of the two central incisors. You can see the leakage on, the, on the, uh, uh, these central incisors and the halo that are created after, uh, beyond the composite. When we restored the right uh, center incisor, as you can see, number 11 was restored. The number 21 showed that it has to be done uh, also. But the difficulty in these situations are to match when these composites are, these teeth are infiltrated with um, uh, these uh, columns of the mouse. As you can see on the lower right of the screen, you see the same case like 15 years later. The composite is dull and the edges are showing some aging and coloration. This patient presented with this kind of erosion that is a very severe er erosion due to brushing. She used to tell me that every time I brush my teeth, my teeth will become darker. The more I brush, the more the darker they become. And actually she wore off all the enamel and part, big part of the dentine. Okay, so at the age of 18 years, I would refrain from doing a, 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 any um, aggressive treatment. I could guide her through a composite buildup that will give her some uh, leeway before going into more aggressive treatment. Uh, my message in this is that teeth are not hair nor nails. They don't grow. When they cut, you cut them first, the second time you have to cut more. You, they don't grow like nail and hair. As you can see, this is the patient before and after build up of the veneers or direct veneers on the four, central, uh, four incisors. This was a picture of her when she was young, and this was when we uh, reconstructed her. Six years later, the aging of these composite veneers, as you can see, you lose the, um, the uh, glaze of the uh, composite, and the composite becomes dull. Plus that, as you can see, 
If you uh, put it in black and white, you will see how much of the light reflection you lose and the surface texture you lose because the composite get abraded. But the best reconstructive material of a broken tooth is the broken tooth by itself. If the patient has a broken tooth, just retrieve it, bring it, and you just pound it in place and it will stay for years and years to come. This patient, uh, I have a follow-up of him uh, of eight years, but he is now like 20 years after and still having the tooth in place. Even if the fracture is beyond the gum, just do it and bond it. It will heal. And the gum will accept much more the natural tooth than any foreign material other than the tooth. This has been done more than one time and we had to build it up more than one time. And it's still holding and the patient is still happy with it. Even if the tooth is broken in many pieces, the best uh, material would be the tooth itself. Do not throw away these pieces. As you can see, the left central is divided into three pieces that were bonded again in the mouth of the patient. The day of the bonding, this tooth will be slightly brighter, whiter. Give it 24 hours to 48 hours, it will be infiltrated with saliva and it will regain back the color and the shape of the tooth. But some cases are more difficult than others. As you can see, this is a patient that has a nasal edge of the right central incisor that is broken. We are not going to go into full veneer or a, a full crown to, to restore this patient. We can just do a composite, but this is a case where you have a lot of challenges due to the color and the um, uh, uh, translucencies and the chroma that the patient has on the mesial edge. As you can see, we have to remove the old uh, composite, build it up, and try to mimic as much as possible the uh, natural tools. Here may, we might have had some more transparent than is needed on the mesial edge, but we can just cut it a little bit because it's longer than the left center incisor and get that. How do we get to these um, uh, full veneer composites? How can we do them in direct, directly in the mouth of the patient on, uh, on site? This is a patient who's complaining from the aesthetic result after periodontal uh, uh, treatment. And the perio of uh, her uh, was under control and as you can see, the, she has now a very healthy gingiva. But meanwhile, uh, the cent right, right central incisor erupted and the cervical area are not on the same level. And she was complaining of the aesthetics of this central incisor. We can um, build up a cage for the composite with the celluloid strips. You just cage it up, you just build it up with the celluloid strip. We can uh, use the uh, wooden wedges, plastic wedges, or cotton pellets in this case. These cotton pellets are dipped in the bonding. You just dip them in the bonding. So you'll be able to put them in between the teeth, mold the uh, plastic or the uh, matrix, mold it accordingly, and then light cure it so it will take the shape that is needed on both sides because sometimes in these cases the wedges will press the uh, celluloid strip and will change the anatomy but with this kind of technique with the cotton pellet that is um, full uh, well, that is dipped in bonding it will give us a proper modeling or molding of the celluloid strip and here you have isolated the uh, sulcus from any contaminants, even the circular um, uh, sulcus liquid that oozes from the gingiva. It will ooze outside the, the uh, celluloid matrix. You etch the enamel, then you properly bond, self bond on the dentine, and then you can do the other tools the same way. And the advantage of this technique that it, it will give you the emerging profile. The profile that is very close to the gingiva is already done. 
You don't need to touch it. You don't need to polish it. It's already polished because of the glaze of the um, matrix. Also, the transition lines between the mesial and the buccal and the distal and the buccal, you have these angles that are very clean, very uh, polished. You don't need to go in and uh, uh, strip them, neither with the celluloids, uh, with the abrasive strips, with or polish them with anything. They are already polished because of the celluloid strips. As you can see, these are the, the teeth before polishing at the end of the treatment. But let's see them like down the line, like 13 years down the line. You can see the aging of the composite. The gingiva on the right central incisor has retracted slightly from the margin of the composite and so also on the left central incisor. Plus, they have on these um, composites the porosities that you did not notice, we did not notice when we were glaze, uh, polishing and building up the composite. As you can see, the margin also ages on these uh, uh, type of restorations. This patient, I'm going to talk about the limitations throughout the case of this patient. This patient has uh, composite veneers on her six front teeth. She was complaining that she had big teeth. Yes, she has big teeth relatively. Any tooth that is covered with any material will come bigger if you don't prepare the tooth. As we will see here from the palatal side, the patient had only two cent a composite on the mesial parts of the two central incisors. Why did the dentist do all these veneers on these teeth? And she was complaining and asking us, asking me to remove all these composites. I refrained from doing so. She told me that she had her wedding with her natural teeth. You can see that they, had, they were very nice teeth. You can barely see on the mesial part between the two central incisors some shadow of the old composites that are in between. But what happened and for what reason this dentist, when she consulted him, gave her these kind of veneers? I don't know. With age, you will see with time, the composite was aging and losing from its color and its shine and starting to fracture. At this stage, we were, we were compelled to remove all composite. And slowly, with a, uh, abrasives, we were able to slowly, slowly abrasives and then cutters and sharp instruments, we were able to remove all the uh, composite from the surface of the teeth. Uh, happily, the teeth were not touched. As you can see, still the old composites were uh, on the teeth. We did all, uh, the dentist did all these uh, veneers on the front teeth without changing the old composites that were the cause of the problem and the concentration of this patient. Actually, by simply changing the two pre, uh, class threes, simply only the class threes were changed, we were able to give her back the shine and the happy smile that she had before. Which one of these two smiles would you like? The upper left or the lower right? Definitely the lower right is more feminine. It goes more with the character of the patient. The upper left is more masculine and does not reflect the femininity of this very nice, beautiful lady. But we cannot just do everything with composites. Like this patient, when she complained from her uh, uh, teeth, from her smile, actually, it's not with composites or just cut and build up. We can just do that. We need to send this patient for orthodontic treatment, proper orthodontic treatment, as you can see on the lower slides, after orthodontic treatment and proper alignment of the teeth, then we will be able to just build up the two central incisors and the right lateral. Two central incisors and one right lateral, only the edges, almost with no preps. As you can see, these were the, uh, at the time where we we're trying, they are slightly too long for her smile, and then you will see that the difference between the upper and the lower, and you will see her now, after the treatment has been finished, the teeth has been corrected, shortened a little bit, and you will see a very happy lady with this smile. You can see her here, and function, and with a nice smile. Orthodontics 
is a very helpful instrument or a helpful technique, not only cutting and building up the teeth. Can use in one uh, uh, treatment solve the problem of the, the smile of this patient? Definitely not. This patient has a very complex situation where she would need orthodontics to correct the uh, position of the teeth. And then from here, we will start analyzing the smile, looking at the lip length, which is very normal and very dis well distributed, and the magnitude of the elevation of the lip. And we will see that the lip, she has a gummy smile, but what is this guy, the gummy smile coming? Where is it coming from? The lip of uh, elevation is eight millimeters, which is within the normal ele elevation values. The vertical maxil maxillary height, let's look at the patient. She is very normal, normal patient. She has a very well distributed face. So surgically, she is not a candidate for surgery. This is a patient that has a very short crown height, but this short crown height has two uh, origins. One is the edges, as you will see, the abrasions, because when you look at the uh, uh, lip at rest, we will see that the, the teeth are not showing properly. On um, the females, we need to see two to four millimeters at lip rest. This is due to the abrasion. This is to, due to the erosion that has because of her occlusion. So we need two millimeters down, but is it enough? Two millimeters on the central incisors plus seven millimeters, we end up with nine. The central incisor uh, length or height varies between, nine, uh, between 10 and 11. So the other part should be taken from the gingiva. And this is how we analyze the uh, treatment for this patient. So she would, we need to extend the edges of the central incisors and do some gingival correction to elongate on the gingival area the Teeth. You can see here after the orthodontic treat, uh, after the orthodontic and periodontal treatment, where the gingiva has been elevated on uh, the teeth from the first molar to the first uh, right first molar to the left first molar. And from there, what we did on the central incisors, we just changed the composite that were class fives on the central incisors, and we give with, uh, give her only with some built up on the two central incisors, just two central incisors, changing the class five and giving up some two millimeters that were needed. As you can see here from the palatal side, the uh, reflection which always show you the added composite. And you will see that the orthodontically after ortho and when we finalize the composite only on the two central incisors. Again, here, some composite was redone on the uh, lateral, and the lateral was not touched at all. As you can see here, laterals were not touched. Only the two central incisors were uh, added with composite. As you can see here, the aging of the composite, we lose the glare, we lose the polish, we lose the uh, brightness on the composite. Patients do complain from black teeth, dark teeth, and for that, uh, we can build it up with composite. But we have to know that the composite is very dull. It will ref uh, translute uh, uh, against the composite. And again, here we use the uh, wedges to uh, secure the uh, celluloid strips simply because of the anatomy of the teeth is still a normal anatomy. We don't want to change the anatomy. Etch the whole thing, rinse, bond, bond, and build up the composite in such a way where we have to uh, do the, all the makeups for the different colors. And here you can see that it's slightly whiter than the uh, adjacent tools because we were wanted to compensate for the uh, uh, darkness of the left center insides. But if you look at it, the day of the placement, you will see slightly brighter. But if you look at it sometimes later, it will catch up with the color. And as you can see, it has lost some of the brightness that it had. As you can see here, it's getting dull and more dull with time. 
When you have a patient that has, is complaining from her smile, this is a patient who presented complaining of her smile. Because of the occlusion, you see that she could not have a proper eruption of the central inci of the incisors that are going to display in her smile. We cannot just do this without the help of the orthodontics. Orthodontics will bring her in. But meanwhile, she had done another filling, lip filling for the upper lip. As you can see, the upper lip has a part that is dry, that belongs to the wet area. And we had to extend the central incisors beyond the uh, fractured line and we build up also the canine. We were only supposed to correct the edge, edges of the centrals and the canine, but because of the blip filling, we had to do it more and extend more the central incisors. And then you will see this patient at the end of the treatment with the development of her lips throughout the treatment. As you can see on the left, you have before the treatment, after the orthodontic in the middle, and after the end of the whole treatment on the left. Uh, meanwhile, the lip on the profile, this is before, this is after orthodontic treatment, and here is at the end of the treatment, that is what we call a duck lip, Donald Duck lips. But she is more happy on the left than on the right slide. Another patient complaining about, uh, of her smile, and we can see the edges are uh, wearing. If you catch these patients at a very young age, it's the best time to catch, because the, when you end up having edge-to-edge -edge, uh, occlusion, the teeth that will wear most are the upper teeth. The upper teeth will suffer from the edge-to-edge -edge occlusion. That's why we need to act as soon as possible. We need to slightly, with simple orthodontics, build up, uh, we needed to build up the central incisors. But how can we do it when we have edge to edge? We simply have to push the uh, uh, incisors slightly forward to create a overjet that is enough for us to be able, as you can see here on the profile, the overjet that we needed to be able to build up the composite practically without any preparations. We can just edge a bond and extend the teeth, as you can see, this is the day of the uh, finished treatment. And here you have the sequence of the treatment. When before, after orthodontic on number two, upper right, and uh, the lower right of the screen is immediately at the end of the treatment. And on number four, it is after the treatment for some time. Uh, this is the patient in function. You can see now when she talks, when she smiles, we can see the upper, the upper teeth. And this is what is supposed to happen in the smile of the patient. We are supposed to see the upper teeth, not the lower teeth in the smile of the patient. Unfortunately, like 16 years later, this is how she came in. The aging of the composite, composite to age. And it has been broken and restored again in France. And we were, uh, we, she needed more because of the aging. The aging is sagging and the lips will go down. All the opening of the lips will show more of the lower teeth, more than the upper teeth. Again, we, she wanted to upgrade her smile. At this stage, we were obliged to do some veneers, ceramic veneers to bring her on a longer teeth to bring her in a more uh, display of the upper teeth than the lower teeth. And this is what she wanted to have as final result. Composite is a sponge. Composite is a sponge. And this sponge will act badly. You can see here with time, this is a patient who presented complaining of composite finis that were done to her. And you cannot smell the gum. She had some very bad smell due to the inflammation of her mouth. We cannot just correct that simply by polishing. We need to whole, polish the whole thing, starting by the margins, by the teeth, changing the profile, the emergence profile, to get to, into a healthy changing. And she refused to remove all this composite because, she, had, as she said, she had paid money, lots of money for that. And this is how we were able to keep her for some time. But later on, as you can see here, the colors again, the color, it's a B1, 
the one that is on the shade gun. The, these are, I don't know, it's paper white uh, color. B1, more than we B1. And the aging of this, this is how she presented. This is how we cleaned her on the right of the screen. And you will see how she came, came and how she came back like 10 years later. 10 years later, composite is a sponge. It's a bad sponge. You have to ch change it because the margins will age. The uh, porosities will show. Everything will age. At this stage, the only thing to do was to do a full rehabilitation of this patient. Again, we were struck with the same color that she wanted to have. She was happy with we, what we gave her. And unfortunately, this is too white to my liking. Moving into edges, as you can see, edge to edge occlusion, we need to restore it. We cannot just do it with composites. This is a patient who has lost a lot of the edges of the teeth due to the edge to edge occlusion. Can we build her up? No, we cannot build her up. What do we need to build her up? We need to restore the occlusion in a proper way so we will be able to extend the teeth to their proper uh, lengths. As you can see, the lower teeth show fracture, attrition, and spacing. Why not bring these teeth back forwards? And when she smiles, she's showing more uh, the edges of the lower teeth. If we do orthodontics, we will be able to create space for the upper teeth by bringing the lower teeth backwards, cutting the edges of the lower teeth or shaving them in a proper way, we will be able to close the spaces orthodontically and creating an overjet. So we will be able to extend the upper teeth to the proper length. As you can see now, we have an overjet of the teeth. And then instead of having an edge to edge and the reverse occlusion, now we have a proper occlusion that we can manage. And by doing so, we will be able to build up a smile that is not showing anymore the lower teeth. Why the lower teeth are not showing anymore? Because when you bring the lower teeth inward, the lower lip will unfold and it will grow up. Because when the lower teeth are flared out, the lower lip will evert and it will show more of the lower teeth. And you will see here stabilization of the lower teeth. Then we will concentrate on the upper teeth and the preparation on the help, a healthy gum and replacing the old teeth with ceramics. As you can see, the lower teeth are in a healthy situation. The upper teeth are in a healthy situation again. The occlusion has been restored and you can see. Guess the age of this patient? There is no age for this kind of treatment. This was 75 when she did the orthodontic treatment and you will be able to see uh, the how we brought her from the uh, un healthy smile to a very happy smile and you can see that the lower teeth are not displaying anymore in her smile or lip at rest because we, they were retracted slightly in the back towards the back this is a colleague dentist that has missing letters and the canine were replacing the, the uh, uh, missing letters the upper right lateral fractured and how can we do that we needed to restore the whole smile Implants are to be used in this situation, definitely. But composites were used for a temporary just to understand where we're going. We extended the uh, central incisors to give her back a proper uh, treatment. Veneers were done on two central incisors. Full crowns on the laterals that are the canines. And the uh, implant was done. So we have a multitude of... Uh, material to be able to work with. Here you have to trust your lab. You have to take your, a, a good impression and communicate with your lab to be able to bring her to a proper color because different material was used. Two Emax crowns were used on the center incisors, two uh, zirconia crowns were used on the canines that are replacing the laterals and on the implants and the premolars in the back. So translucency, color, all this, has to be coordinated with your lab. Your lab is your best uh, partner. As you can see, this is before, this is after, and you will see her aging with these kind of restoration, sometimes like nine years after. 
contraindications of these kind of veneers. Contraindications of these kind of veneers is when you have bad teeth. Look at this kind of veneers. Uh, they were done, the, the patient could not occlude on the posteriors because they were done with non -prep, prep veneers. She only was uh, occluding on the front teeth and no contact on the posterior teeth whatsoever. And not only that, let have a look on the occlusion and have a look at the, on the plane molars. Have a look on the gingiva. No gingival health. These teeth on the premolars needed to be fully crowned because they were root canal treated and not veneers. They don't need veneers on the premolars. She, we need full uh, crowns. Veneers can be done on patients like this, ceramic veneers. Look at this fish. She had composite veneers. And these composite veneers were aging. And we and falling down. Lateral incisor fell. The premolar fell. Look how thick is this veneer on the uh, built up on the gingiva. Look how the, the gingiva is reacting to the composite. Soft tissue do not like composite. Composite is nice. It's a very uh, flexible material. But the gingiva does not like it because of the infiltration of the bacteria. As you can see, the plaque could not be properly cleaned on the canine and on the central incisor. So for this patient, when we removed everything, this is the situation that we have. And we would like to have margins on sound teeth, not on composite. So that's why we had to go reflect into the proximal areas to the edges where we had sound teeth, not composite. For that, we had to go almost three quarter crowns to reach a sound um, enamel. And as you see on the front teeth, all these front teeth have all the enamel, but on the proximal area, we will have to go on deep to be able to reach the sound enamel. And this is how the design of these crowns on the, on the models. This is how it was restored, bonded to the surface of the tooth. If you have a ceramic uh, veneer, you need to have, you need desperately to have more than 60% of enamel to be able to restore. And here is the patient at the end of the treatment, a very happy, healthy patient. In the end, I would like to thank you for your listening to this presentation. And you can see my uh, telephone number and my email for more inquiries. Thank you. Thank you, Dent Links, for the opportunity to present on this site. Thank you very much.